Tumba News presents Fishing. Look at guts! Look at guts! Oh, oh, yeah! Adorable sea lion chases boat. Human awards it with huge fish. Monster great white shark hooked near South Carolina. A fisherman who routinely catches and releases sharks had the experience of a lifetime after hooking not one but two of the great predators in a single day. After setting off near the Hilton Head Coast in South Carolina on Tuesday, Chip Michelov and his two-person crew hooked a great white shark weighing a whopping 3,000 pounds. But before they could catch the mammoth shark, it spit out the hook and swam away. The disappointed fisherman nearly called it a day, but decided to give it another shot. Another great white soon came biting, this one more modestly sized at nine and a half feet long. After a bit of a struggle, the crew finally caught the fella, put an acoustic tag on him and sent him on his merry way. Tags typically stay on for seven years and provide scientists with helpful data to study and protect the majestic predators. All in all, it was a pretty productive day for Michelov and his crew. Still, the fisherman can't help but pine for the one that got away. Japanese Fisherman Lands Monster Fish Japanese fisherman Hiroki Hirasaka captured a gigantic fish in the waters off northern Japan near eastern Russia. Hirasaka set off last month on a fishing tour around Shiratoko Peninsula of Japan's northern island of Hokkaido, where wolf fish live near the sea floor, 50 to 100 meters below water surface. The species normally grows up to 1.2 meters in length, but the beast here a Saka reeled in was nearly two meters long. The photo of the massive fish went viral globally after Hirasaka posted it to Twitter. It was worth flying to Shiratoko twice in three months, and this guy is absolutely awesome, said Hirasaka. Some people threw out the idea that the size of the freakishly large catch might be the result of radiation from the 2011 Fukushima nuclear disaster. So what's happened after that picture? Hirasaka said he grilled the fish and ate it. Mm -mm -mm. Underwater drone revolutionizes fishing. Technology company Power Vision has unveiled a drone that can help users see what's going on underwater and may increase efficiency in fishing. The Power Ray drone has an onboard camera and an optional add on fish finder sonar. The devices can be used together or separately. The drone can dive to a depth of 98 feet, while the sonar can track fish about 131 feet below the drone. A blue tinted light is designed to lure fish, while a drop function allows the user to deliver the bait whenever he or she wants. Users can watch the footage captured by the drone via their cell phones, which allows them to better determine when to reel in the fish. Some argue that it's not fishing if you can actually see underwater, but pre-orders for the drone will begin in February, and sales of the device will probably better reflect how many people find the technology appealing. Baby seal trapped in fishing net freed by surfers in Australia. On July 19th, a group of tourists on Manana Beach stumbled upon this poor little guy, trapped in this green fishing net and alone. The tourists quickly found help in the form of some local surfers who grabbed a knife and managed to cut him loose. I'm trying to do these all in one go. Okay. Ready? Getting ready to run. You nearly got him, bro. He's gone. 
As you can see, the moment he broke away, he bolted for the ocean and never looked back, much to the delight of his rescuers. It was far less of an ordeal than what another seal in nearby Tasmania went through a few days later. The 265-pound seal was found sleeping in the women's bathroom of a cemetery on July 26th. Wildlife officers, who named the seal Sammy, think he likely swam up a creek from the ocean roughly 500 meters away. But Sammy wasn't behind bars for long. After being sedated and removed from the ladies' room, he too was returned to the water, ready to swim toward his next wild adventure. Freedom at last. Aussie fishermen spot drowning wombat in lake. Pull off rescue mission. Craig Wilson and his stepdad, Bob Wilton, were enjoying a nice day out on the lake when they spotted something moving around in the water. And it was no fish. At first, they thought it might be a duck-billed platypus, but upon closer inspection, they realized it was a wombat. Acting fast, the pair extended a fishing pole to the poor creature, who grabbed it and hung on for dear life. Look at our wombat rescuers. I meant to swim. The fishermen managed to get the wombat into their landing net and soon brought it aboard their vessel. Exhausted, the rescuers say the wombat shook itself off and just walked around their boat a little. Judging by this photo, it looks like they offered up a snack, too, after the stressful ordeal. The fishermen believe the soaking wet marsupial drifted about 250 meters offshore, the rescue mission lasting about 20 minutes. After getting settled, the dynamic duo headed back to shore, where they set their new wombat pal free, back into the bush. Of all the catches they've ever made, they'll have to try pretty hard to top that one. Shark jumps clear out of water after being hooked by New Zealander fishermen. The two fishermen screaming in this video are doing so for good reason. They've hooked a 10-foot shark and it's not giving up without a fight. Franz Elliot Gordon and Paul Adlington went fishing for snapper in Taranga Harbor on Christmas Eve, but they caught more than they bargained for when something mean bit the mackerel bait on the end of their line. It looks something like this. A bronze whaler shark, almost as big as their 15-foot boat. How did they identify it? <laughs> well, they got a pretty good look at the massive fish when it did this. Looks like this shark had Space Jam-like hops and a monster appetite. The fishermen say the shark stayed hooked for about 30 minutes and they were scared it might jump into their boat, as you can probably tell by their girlish screams. <laughs> Who knew sharks could fly? <laughs> Cute cats go on a fishing trip. Lebanese men go fishing with firecrackers. This group of fishermen in Lebanon are using a tactic known as blast fishing. In the video, the men can be seen looking into the water before a firecracker is lit and thrown overboard. The explosion sends the fish flying in the air and right into the nets and boats of their would-be captors. The men squeal with glee as the hundreds of fish splash and flop all over the place. The short clip was first posted to Facebook last year, but has since gone viral. This footage was reportedly filmed in Lebanon, a country where the practice of blast fishing has been banned. Orca whales harassing fishing boats for their catches. Fishermen out in Alaska are dealing with a new threat to their fishing hauls in the form of killer whales. Recently, the pods of predators have been observed targeting individual boats, even waiting hours for the fish to pile up. Once the fishermen are ready to call it quits, that's when tens of orcas swim in to swipe the catch. A fisherman interviewed by the National Post likened the shakedown to the methods of a biker game. 
The fishermen who've been victimized by this thuggery say not only do they get stalked by the whales, they sometimes get chased back to port. Using electronic noisemakers was one disruption technique designed to shoo them away, but the orcas now hear it as a dinner bell. The fishermen also report they've seen more juvenile whales, which could mean the young ones are being taught how to go gangster at an early age. The increased incidence of whale thieving in the area is being attributed to populations rebounding, following a moratorium on commercial whaling in the 1990s. That and killer whales are socially advanced creatures as well as expert hunters, known to invent their own hunting strategies and share useful information amongst their pods. While there are no reports of wild orca whales killing humans, that doesn't mean they're opposed to roughing you up. Hawaii fishermen reeled in after 12 days lost at sea. Ron Ingram is one lucky man. The 67-year-old was rescued on Tuesday after spending 12 days on the high seas off Hawaii in his 25-foot boat. The Coast Guard and US Navy discovered a hungry, weak and dehydrated Ingram about 80 miles from where he had made two mayday calls almost two weeks ago. Ingram was fishing in his boat Malia off the island of Molokai on November 27th when he radioed in a distress call saying his boat was experiencing engine trouble and taking on water. This is the Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. I'm in the middle of Alinui Channel. Uh, small boat, danger of sinking. The initial search involving a Navy P-3 Orion aircraft and Coast Guard cutter failed to turn up the Malia, despite covering an area of 12,000 square miles. Authorities then decided to suspend the search, despite objections from his son Zachary, who said his father was tough and a survivor. At one point during his ordeal, Ingram said he was washed overboard by a massive wave, but was able to pull himself back in using a safety rope. After 12 days drifting at sea and now desperate, Ingram decided to try once more and made another distress call. This time it was picked up by the US Coast Guard, who relayed the information to the USS Paul Hamilton, just 14 miles away. The ship made its way to the signal source, where they found the Malia and Ingram. Crew members rescued, then fed and watered him before taking Ingram and the Malia back to the nearest harbour, where he is now recovering and apparently planning his next fishing trip.